Methods to effectively remove per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances, or PFAS, from fire suppression systems are prepared as a part of Environmental Security Technology Certification Program, or ESTCP, Project ER20-5364. Fire suppression systems, such as hangar sprinkler systems and Aviation Rescue and Firefighting, or ARFF vehicles, are impacted by residual PFAS absorbed to internal surfaces as a result of the legacy and ongoing use of Class B firefighting foams containing floral surfactants, such as aqueous film forming foam, or AFFF. When one firefighting formulation is replaced by another, new PFAS free firefighting formulations can be impacted by residual surface bound PFAS within the fire suppression system. Proper foam transition methods will reduce both the cost and short-term, long-term liability related to PFAS impacts by preparing existing equipment for the introduction of a new, unimpacted, PFAS-free firefighting formulation. This video provides an overview of the foam transition process, including an overview of the methods, highlighting key decision points. Regulations restricting the use and release of PFAS are being proposed and promulgated throughout the world with several enacted regulations addressing the use of PFAS-containing firefighting foam. U.S. Congress added several AFFF restrictions for the U.S. Department of Defense in the 2020 and 2022 National Defense Authorization Acts. In addition to regulatory drivers, firefighting foam users are transitioning to PFAS-free firefighting formulation to reduce environmental liability in the event of a release to reduce the cost of expensive containment systems and management of generated waste streams, and to avoid reputational damage. Arcadis developed a six-step process to help clients with the foam transition process. The foam transition process may include, but is not limited to locating, identifying and evaluating existing systems and AFFF, fire engineering evaluations, system prioritization, cost and downtime analysis, remedial and removal actions, spill response, sampling and analysis, evaluation of risks and hazards to human health and the environment, engineering containment and filtration, recovery, storage, transportation, and disposal. Numerous companies are now manufacturing and delivering PFOS-free firefighting formulation for both fixed systems and ARFF vehicles. Each system owner should select a PFAS-free firefighting formulation using information on the compatibility of the new PFAS-free firefighting formulation with the existing system as well as environmental certifications, such as verifying the absence of organic fluorine or PFAS or the absence of other non-fluorine environmental contaminants. A fire protection engineer should be consulted to ensure the new PFAS-free firefighting formulation is compatible with existing system components. In some cases, it might be environmentally preferable and or more cost effective to replace the entire fire suppression system or portions of the system instead of cleaning the existing system to remove residual PFAS. Unused fire suppression systems, which have never been in contact with any type of AFFF, are not expected to contain residual levels of PFAS as the residual PFAS are present due to prolonged exposure to AFFF. Decisions on cleaning versus replacement should be made for individual systems using the information provided. General industry guidance has typically recommended equipment rinses with water to remove PFAS impacts. Owing to the unique physical and chemical properties of PFAS, the use of room temperature water to remove PFAS from impacted equipment is inherently limited. To address this need, Arcadis developed a non-toxic cleaning agent, Fluorofighter, that has been proven to remove PFAS from AFFF wetted surfaces by disrupting the layers of PFAS coating equipment surfaces. Laboratory results demonstrated the optimization of PFAS removal methods from fire suppression system pipe obtained from a commercial airport hangar in Sydney, Australia. Prior to removal from the hangar, the stainless steel pipes held PFAS-containing firefighting foam for more than three decades. The results demonstrate Fluorofighter removes more surface-associated PFAS in comparison to equivalent extractions using methanol or water.
Sites performing foam transition will also need to make decisions on which flushing method is most appropriate for their system. Previous results have demonstrated that flushing at elevated temperature can be advantageous. Laboratory extraction of fire suppression system pipe obtained from a commercial airport hangar demonstrated that elevated temperatures improved PFAS removal. Providing proper containment during the cleaning process as to not release any liquids into the environment is an important part of the cleaning method. The type of secondary containment used will be site-specific and should be selected by the field team prior to mobilization. For mobile systems like fire trucks, the entire truck can be driven onto a secondary containment berm. For fixed systems like hangar fire suppression piping and tanks, secondary containment can be placed under connections as applicable, and drains can be covered with containment. In general, sampling techniques used for PFAS site characterization are consistent with conventional sampling techniques used in the environmental industry. But special consideration is made regarding high concentration PFAS materials, cross-contamination potential, precursor content, and matrix interferences. The analytical method selected should be appropriate for the regulatory requirements in the site area. Since disposal methods for PFAS containing waste, especially liquid waste, are still not established, it is important to minimize the fluid volume used for system flushing. Regenerating the cleaning agent for reuse on site is beneficial because it allows the same volume to be used multiple times, which minimizes the overall liquid waste generation. Granular activated carbon has been used for previous cleaning agent regeneration. For more information on the methods provided in this video, please see Lang et al. 2022 or the ESTCP project website.